Call of Duty is not exactly a series known for making historical accuracy a top priority, but with Black Ops Cold War, it likes to put itself right in the middle of real history. From world leaders such as Reagan and Gorbachev, to illegal mind control experiments such as MKUltra, real people and real events are interwoven throughout Cold War. If you've played the game, you might have some questions. Did the US have nukes in Vietnam? Do Vietnamese zombies eat brains with a side of rice? Is Robert Redford, in fact, a super spy? The answer to some of these questions might surprise you. So, get ready to call in air support, commit some war crimes, and smash that like button as we discover the truth behind Black Ops Cold War. Starting with the Vietnam War. But first, this video may contain some light spoilers. Okay, let's begin. It's January 26, 1968, just days before the infamous Tet Offensive. You're woken up by Robert Redford. <clears throat> I mean, Russell Adler. Your mission? Fractured jaw. The objective? I don't know, this guy won't tell me shit. We got a new assignment. FOB4 Ripcord is holding a vital asset. Charlie wants real bad. What kind of asset are we talking about? The kind you don't ask about. So there you are, Mac V SOG operative, en route from Camp Haskins to FOB Ripcord. What the fuck does that even mean? Mac V stands for Military Assistance Command Vietnam, and they served as an overall command structure for the Vietnam War. SOG, the Special Forces Group in focus here, stands for Studies and Observations Group. All volunteer and highly secretive, this group accepted only the cream of the crop from the Green Berets, Navy SEALs, and Force Recon, as well as the CIA and Air Force. This multi-branch SF group was the first of its kind and was precursor to SOCOM, making Mac B. SOG the big daddy of modern special forces. Their mission was to gather intelligence on and sabotage the Ho Chi Minh Trail by any means possible. More often than not, they were inserted deep behind enemy lines via helicopter throughout Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Most of their missions took place where the U.S. officially had no presence. They ambushed, kidnapped assets, and sabotaged supply routes. Sometimes, they really did study and observe before running for their lives. Were these missions illegal? Yes. Were the missions of the communists also illegal? Yes. Not only was this group made of the most badass Americans you've never heard of, they also recruited locals to their mission, proving vital to their survival. Speaking of survival, SOG had a 100% casualty rate, meaning 100% either died or were injured at some point. SOG got the job done, but can you even imagine what it's like to volunteer for something like that? Alright, so there you are, Mac V SOG operative northwest of Da Nang, heading from the real life Camp Haskins to the real life FOB record to pick up the asset. When you're diverted to fuck up a village, murder your clandestine Russian counterparts, and collect intel on Perseus. Who the fuck is Perseus? 1943. Detailed information from the Manhattan Project was stolen from Los Alamos by the Russian spy known as Perseus. 1968, Vietnam War. Viet Cong soldiers orchestrated by Perseus attempted to steal an American-made nuclear bomb from a U.S. firebase. Five days ago, while on a mission, we acquired intel that Perseus is in play again and planning an attack on the West. Perseus. The CIA's analysts consider him to be the single largest threat to the free world. Mr. Hudson, we're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian boogeyman. All right, let's stop it right there. What if I told you that everything you just heard about Perseus is true? Not about the in-game figure, but about the real life Perseus. It is a distinct possibility, but the truth is we may never know. 
In regards to public information on Perseus, Perseus shows up in declassified spy intercept messages going back to World War II, and is mentioned in interviews conducted in the 1990s with former Soviet agents and officials. Perseus probably isn't a single person, but rather a group or network of spies. If you ask the NSA, Perseus is important yet still unidentified. If you ask the CIA, Perseus is just a boogeyman that never existed. Perhaps Perseus was just that good at their job. With the random village now properly fucked, it's time to rescue Fob Ripcord and retrieve the asset, a thermonuclear device, just in case the US loses the war. We that desperate already? Not yet. You may have heard, but the US did lose the war in Vietnam, and not a single nuke was set off. That doesn't really answer the question though. Did we have nukes in Vietnam? The short answer is no, but the punchline is, Fractured Jaw was a real plan. Concocted by General Westmoreland, the nukes were seen as the military just doing its due diligence in regards to tactics. Concerned about nuclear holocaust, however, President Johnson shut the plan down before it could even begin. At least, that's as far as we know. Thank you for joining me on my first Gaming vs. History video. I hope you'll smash that subscribe and join me next time for part 2, as well as more Gaming vs. History to come. Thanks again and peace.